Everybody had a good summer? Yeah, maybe. You're not sure yet. Okay. Well, my name is Anais, and you've, I've seen all of you here, and you've seen me here. Good morning. We're going to talk today a little bit about music. Do any of you play a musical instrument? You do. What do you play? Guitar. Yeah. Guitar. And how long have you been playing guitar? Uh, mm -mm. Oh. A while. Well, a little less than a year ago. And I started like last year. That's that's a while. Little. So say it again. A little less than a year. A little less than a year. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, oh, I went to public school in Philadelphia. I had a wonderful time. And part of that wonderful time in public school included learning a musical instrument. I played the um, French horn. I also played piano and guitar. And I was lucky enough to sing in the uh, choir at Philadelphia High School for Girls for all four years of my time there. So I am someone who adores music, and unfortunately, I had to choose between music and art, and art won out. But today, how many of you have been to the orchestra? Yeah? Yeah? Good experience for you? Okay, well, if you get a chance to go to the orchestra, don't miss it. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we have a very good one here in Philadelphia. So this story is called The Philharmonic Gets Dressed, and it's by Carla Kuskin. It is almost Friday night. Outside, the dark is getting darker and the cold is getting colder. Inside, lights are coming on in houses and apartment buildings. And here and there, uptown and downtown, and across the bridges of the city, 105 people are getting dressed to go to work. First, they get washed. There are 92 men and 13 women. Many take showers. A few take baths. Two men and three women run bubble baths, and one man reads in the tub while the cat watches. One woman sits in the bubbles and sings. When they have finished washing, they dry. They use big towels and little towels and a lot of dusting powder. All the men shave, except for three who have beards. Two trim. Then. When 105 people are showered and bathed, shaved and toweled, dusted and dried, they put on their underwear. <coughs> when all the men have their underwear on, they get into long sleeve white shirts and button them up. Then they put on black trousers. 45 men stand up to get into their pants. 47 sit down. Each pair of pants has a shiny black stripe down the outside of each leg. The men zip zippers and button a button or two. One man has wavy black hair streaked with white like lightning. He puts on a very soft white shirt with ruffles down the front. It has special cuffs that fasten with cufflinks. The man hooks a wide black cloth around his waist. This belt is called a cummerbund. None of the other men wear belts with their pants. They button suspenders into the waistlines of their pants and snap the suspenders over their shoulders. Eight women dress in long black skirts. They wear black tops, sweaters, or blouses. Four women put on long black dresses. And one wears a black jumper over a black shirt. A few of the women put jewelry on, a necklace, earrings, but no bracelets. Why do you think no bracelets? Bracelets would get in the way when they're working. All the men put on black bow ties. Some tie them in front of mirrors. Some stare into space and tie them. The thin man whistles a tune as he ties his tie on. 27 men clip on ties that are already made into bows. The man with the black, wavy black and white hair, the ruffly shirt, and the cummerbund ties on a very big white bow tie. It looks like a white bat. No one else has a tie like his. He slips on a white vest and then a black jacket that is short in the front and long in the back, where it divides into two, like 
black beetle wings. The jacket and pants are called tails. The, the, tonight, all the other 91 men put on tuxedo jackets. They are black too, with shiny satin lapels, but they do not have a black beetle wing back. When all the men and women are completely dressed in black and white, they get ready to go out. They put on overcoats, jackets or capes, boots or rubbers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs. Then almost everyone picks up a case. The cases are different shapes and shades of black and brown. The man with the dark wavy hair with a white lightning in it, the ruffly shirt, cummerbund and bow tie looks like a white bat. The bow tie that looks like a white bat picks up a very thin leather briefcase. No one else has a case like this. Does your guitar have a case? Yes. Yeah. Orange, a lot of instruments have cases. That's how we get them around. Mine had a case. All the 105 men and women say goodbye. Goodbye to mothers and fathers, husbands, wives, friends, children's dog, birds, and a cat. Whoever is staying at home. Then they walk out of 105 doors into 105 streets and there they take cabs, cars, subways or buses to the middle of the city. The man with the black and white wavy hair wears a black coat with a velvet collar and a white silk scarf. He steps into a very long car that is waiting for him outside his apartment building. And while the driver drives, the man opens his case and looks at some papers. He sings a little and he hums. At 8.25 on Friday night in the middle of the city, 104 people walk onto the big stage in Philharmonic Hall. They have left their overcoats, jackets, or capes, boots or rubbers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs backstage in dark green metal lockers. They have left their cases in different shapes and shades of black and brown back there too. Now 101 of the men and women are carrying the musical instruments that were in those cases. Three people do not carry instruments. They are the harpist, who plays the harp, and the two timpanists, who play the kettle drums and small percussion instruments, the cymbals, a gong. These instruments are too heavy to carry around. They are already on stage. There are 102 chairs on the stage and two stools. Near each of these, there is a music stand with sheets of music on it. The 104 people take their seats, the double bass players sit on stools, everyone turns to the first page of music. It is a white page covered with black lines and musical notes. The man with the black wavy hair lit with white enters. He walks to the front of the stage and steps one step up onto a box called a podium. There he can be seen very clearly by 104 people on the stage and by the hundreds of people in the audience. The audience applauds, the man bows, he is the conductor, the leader of the orchestra, and he holds a stick in his hand. Do any of you know what that stick is called? But you've seen it? It's called a baton, which is French for stick. The conductor raises the baton in the air, way up on the ceiling of Philharmonic Hall. Six chandeliers sparkle silently. The conductor brings the baton down, and the hall, which is wide and long as a red velvet football field, fills with music. The music floats and rises. It sings and dances from violas, violins, cellos, double basses, flutes, a piccolo bassoons, clarinets, oboes, French horns, trumpets, trombones, a tuba, a harp, drums, cymbals, chimes, and one thin silver triangle. It is 8.30 on Friday night and 105 men and women dressed completely in black and white have gone to work turning black notes on white pages into a symphony. They are the members of the Philharmonic Orchestra and their work is to play 
beautifully. So now we're going to have some people who play these instruments here at USG play for us. And do any of you have music at your school where you can learn an instrument at school? Do you think you might want to try that? It's great. I hope you'll try it. You make lots of new friends and you learn a whole different language. This music with the black lines and notes on the page is a different language. Okay. Thank you for coming up. Enjoy the music that we're going to hear today. Any thoughts? Any comments? No? All right. I hope you have a good school year and with lots of music in it. Thank you.